So in the last video we've created a very simple first person controller and in this one we're gonna make it a little bit better by switching to the new input system. It supports more platforms and devices and you can customize actions at runtime and in general it's just more flexible. It's valuable as a separate package but at some point it will replace the old system so there is just no point in not using it. In fact if you open the input manager it says consider switching right here. So let's open the package manager, switch to Unity registry right here, find the input system on the list and click install. When it's done installing, it will ask you to restart Unity. Now the first thing that we need to do is to add a player input component to our player object. As you can see here, there is no input action asset assigned to this player input component. We can create it by clicking the create actions button. This is where all of our actions are going to be defined. And as you can see, it created some of them for us already. We're only missing an action for jumping, so I'm gonna create one and bind it to space. There are several ways to get notified when actions fire, including send messages, Unity events, and C Sharp events. But in our simple case, we're just gonna get a reference to the player input and pull the values ourselves. First, we're gonna include the input system namespace, and then we're gonna get references to the player input component and its actions like this. In our update movement method, instead of using input get access, we can now call read value method on move action. And it's gonna give us a 2D vector. Same goes for the jump action, but instead of getting a vector, we're getting a float. If you were, for example, to assign it to gamepad trigger, it would return any value between zero and one, but we're interested in whether or not it is pressed at all. So we're just comparing with zero. Uh, now let's do the same in the update look method. And if we run it now, we'll see that the sensitivity is way too high. We can go to the look action and add a processor to scale it down. Now it's much better, but you may notice another issue. The movement is now way too snappy. There is no gradual acceleration at all. We didn't have this problem before because the old input system smoothed the values for us, but the new input system gives us raw values. Let's open our script again and add a new float for acceleration. And in our update movement method, we're gonna interpolate the velocity from current velocity to input by acceleration times delta. So when we press W, the velocity is gonna gradually ramp up until it reaches the input. And when we let it go, it's gonna gradually interpolate back to zero. And we're doing it for X and Z only because we are only interested in horizontal velocity here. Now that velocity accounts for the user input, we should move the input out of the call to controller move like this. The method is starting to get a little big, so why don't we extract the input vector calculation logic into its own method? Like this. Now it's a little bit cleaner and our movement is nice and smooth again. 